the night of the election, I stayed up until three o'clock in the morning and the results were not coming in. <laughs> so I kept flipping channels. I want to sleep, but I can't want to sleep because I want to know. We were actually like on the phone with each other, texting each other in the middle yeah. of the night. It was just like, really? Did he really win? In the morning when I got up and I see that, I was devastated. I don't even know what I'm feeling anymore. Like it's That's kind of true. empty feeling where you're like, you're sad. I tell my children not to listen to all this negativity they hear from outside. But every time they came home, my kids had something to ask. My son said, Mom, we hear that if Donald Trump become president, he's going to take back refugees. So does that mean that he's going to take you and dad away from us? You know, it just breaks my heart. My family is originally from Somalia. I was born in Kenya as a refugee, and from Somalia, civil war, to Kenya, refugee camp, to the U.S., to becoming nationalized this last year. I ended up in Syracuse as a refugee from Ethiopia. My mom was left behind with my father along with the two younger brothers and sisters, and they got accepted by Great Britain. My uncle has been in process for 10 years, since 2006 until now, waiting for one day to be resettled. And all of a sudden, a president says, no Muslim refugee are allowed. 10 years stuck in that camp, and things are just getting worse. They're afraid for their life. With him winning, the negativity wins, and that's going to spread. I ran into a couple of people here and there, grocery store, where people are like, move, you know, go back to your country, or why do you look like that? Why do you dress like that? I believe that if I have to take off my headscarf for my safety, that's a sign of weakness, and I'm not weak. I don't think Donald Trump won. I think the hatred, the racism within our country won. Yes. There is a lot of people who have voice but are not being heard, and that's where I come in. My role at RISE, which is Refugee Immigrant Self-Empowerment, is to help people find a job and do immigration work. I'll go to court with them, if it's a school, hospital, everywhere, you name it. I work at the mosque, I work with interfaith resettlement agencies. I also uh, volunteer to teach adult beginning English classes. I have over 50 students in one class. And I'm actually a part-time student at Syracuse University, majoring in international relations. And my dream is to work in United Nations one day. This is like the kind of opportunity that we always hoped for. And I know that I wouldn't have been attending SU as a junior year. Two of my sisters are also attending college. Fatima is now on the National Spelling Bee. I got a call from back home. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. The negative message traveled so far. Most of the time, they don't have TV in the camps, so they would hear it from the radio and how the United States is electing a new president, and this president is saying a lot of negativities towards Muslims. My mom calls me all the time and my dad. They're like, are you safe over there? You should move over here or you should move to Canada. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> Syracuse is full of peaceful people. Even though we have one or two here, you know, crazy people running around, we have those everywhere. There's no perfect place on earth. I think my home here in Syracuse is just better for me. It's an opportunity to teach, you know, to at least get to know me. After that, judge me in all you want, but give me a chance. Their brain has been filled with so much uh, negative image and negative information from the social media, mm -hmm. but they have not actually met with the life person, like a refugee like you, a refugee like me. Mm -hmm. Let's just share a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Ask me where I'm from. Let's just move forward. She's from Utah. She's not from How can we fix those negative message? Okay. Thank you very much. By spreading the word of peace and love and unity. Oh.